Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madame, and I'm back again trying to do another story time. So if you see this, that means I was successful in completing it. <laughs> but anyway, let me go ahead and get into it. Y'all are going to see me drink some more of this mocktail that I was drinking earlier when I did my last video. I just poured up a little bit more. It is really good, y'all. Really good. But anyway, um, before I get started, there might be somebody who is going to ask because I get people who ask me this all the time. This is what I have on my lips today. I just got it. Let me see. I just got it at um, Big Lots. I have not been to Big Lots in years. And um, I actually said it earlier in my video, but I deleted it out. And, well, edited it. Edited it. Edited it out. <laughs> Y'all are so sad. But um, I got the mocktail. For let me see if I can show it. Yes, you are reading that very much so correct. 88 cents, honey. And guess how much I got this for? 50 cents. So yeah, y'all. But um, just in case somebody wanted to know, that's what I'm wearing today. I took a chance. It actually wasn't opened. A lot of the other ones were. You could tell that people opened them. And mine wasn't. So I was so happy. I was like, well, I'm going to try it. It looks like a color that would go well with my skin tone. And it does, to my, in my opinion. So, But anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and get into this good old story time. Let me get, let me relax, child. Let me, hold on. Let me, let me kick my feet up. Hold on for a second, y'all. Okay, I have kicked up my heels and I am laying back. So, y'all, let's get into the story time. Um, but before we do, I have to do a disclaimer. Uh, all my family members, I'm going to need for y'all to edit the stage left because um, you already can look at the title. It, it's just going to be a little bit too much. And, yeah. <laughs> but if you decide to be disobedient to my orders... <laughs> You will um, regret it. Um, but yeah. And to the people who think that I am a saint and innocent, in order to preserve what y'all think of me, y'all need to leave too because, yeah. This is going to be, like, videos like this are going to be classified as, like, on days like today being Friday, Freaky Friday or something like that. Like, <sighs> I'm not perfect. I'm not innocent. You know what I'm saying? There have been things that have happened in my life that happened in the past, and that's where they are. So that's why a lot of these story times are what they are, because they were things that happened in my past. And I am open enough to let y'all in on those things. So, all right, we're about to get started, y'all. Okay, so with this story time, as you see with the title, um... I met this guy. So let me give y'all the backstory. I met this guy and he came to ASU to get his transcripts. I worked in records and registration as my work study job so that I could pay for college. And I don't know why, but for some reason, I remember exactly what I was wearing that particular day. I met him once before, but yeah, that's the funny part. <sighs> but that particular day, I was wearing overalls. Y'all know I'm a country girl. I was wearing overalls. And even though I'm on the bigger side, I had on like this mid-drift-ish uh, top underneath. Where the slightest movement you could see, of course, <laughs> things you don't need to be seeing. You know, it wasn't underwear or nothing like that. But, I mean, you would have to be really trying if you was going to see that. But anyway, y'all, so he came in and I did like I always do. And I greeted him and I asked him what did he need help with? He wanted to know where the form was that he needed to fill out in order to 
request a copy of his transcript to be sent where he was going to get it sent to. I told him where they were and went on back about my business, which I was filing something at the time. And so he was standing there. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to need him to get on somewhere. Because I already felt like he was doing the most as it was. Like, I could feel he was looking at me. And I was like, either he's looking at me because he's living for what he see, or he's looking at me because he's disgusted because I'm big. So, well, it turned out to be he was looking at me because he was living for me. And... Y'all, he ended up calling me back over there, acting like he needed help, but he didn't. And so, he gave me his card, and at the time, he was selling mattresses, and he said that he had um, his own business, um, something dealing with vehicles. Um, like, he had a um, a share in, like, a stock or something. And he he was an investor, like a in small businesses or something like that. Like he wasn't like rich, but he had money or whatever. Not that I care. I'm just trying to paint the picture for y'all. Okay, so y'all, he actually ended up requesting his transcript, doing all the stuff he was supposed to do to do that. I told him where he had to take it to, and I'm pretty sure he already knew all this, but I did what I was supposed to do, and I told him where he had to take it to. When he was done and pay for it if you want it um, next day or whatever. Y'all, whatever. So anyway, like I said, he ended up giving me his card. And it actually was his card for when he was selling mattresses or whatever. Right? Okay, so tell me why I politely threw that in the trash that day and went about my business. Cool. So, I don't know how long after that, I went online, like I always do, in between classes, in between work, because I was working at Winn-Dixie, and I was working there at ASU in records and registration, the registrar's office, whatever you want to call it, it's called many things, but anyway, um, I would get online, I would get on College Club, and um, Yahoo Messenger, and those uh, tagged, eventually, was another one that I got on, but I think I saw him on collegeclub.com and we were on there he was talking to me he seemed cool and he was like you know wanted to meet up with me and I told him I was like oh that's cool you know I'm all here for friendship and I always make a point to tell people when I say I'm all here for friendship I'm talking about the regular definition of friendship not friends with benefits because when other people hear friends they thinking oh we about to have sex and i'm like that ain't what this is at all i'm at school i'm trying to do my work i'm not trying to be in a relationship i'm not trying to date no matter how i feel about relationships in this moment i am focused on school so i made that plain and very much so clear and so he acted as if he understood that okay cool so he ended up coming on campus. He was over where, um, see, y'all, I don't even know what the thing is called no more. It used to be called Joel Reed Acadone. Well, let me just say the Acadone because they ended up taking Joel Reed's name off that mug. I ain't finna go into that, but the Acadone. Anybody who is familiar with ASU's campus, you know what I'm talking about when I say the Acadone. So he was in um, the parking lot in front of the Acadone. And so I was like, oh, okay, I could be over there in, you know, like five minutes. So I walked over there because I parked my car for the day. Ain't no reason for me to get in my car and drive to the other side of campus when I could walk and be there in five minutes. So I walked from the registrar's office to the parking lot uh, where um, Joe L. Reed Acadome is or whatever and met up with him. And, you know, I was trying to figure out where he was and he kind of got out of his truck and I was like, Oh gosh, he already looked like somebody I wouldn't like, you know, like not my type. And it's like, he knew what I looked like, but I didn't know what he looked like. So I already was looking at him like, <sighs> y'all. So anyway, we were out there and we were talking. And so, you know, since I'm all about friendship anyway, it doesn't really matter what he looks like. So, you know, I'm just saying in general, he's just somebody that I would not seek out and be like, ooh, he's so fine. I just want to, ooh, I just want to be with him or whatever. Like, none of that. None of that. So, we were talking, had a decent conversation. And so, then he was like, you know, 
or where you gotta be in the next hour. I was like, well, in the next two hours, within the next two hours, I got a class or whatever. And so he was like, oh, okay. He was like, well, you know, can we go somewhere? I was like, um, depends on where. And so he basically made it seem like it was going to be somewhere where we just continue talking that wasn't just on campus standing in the parking lot. I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, I'm, I am, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't care. I'm not, I usually, well, at least back then I wasn't like, okay, stranger danger, alert, alert, <laughs> red flag, none of that. Because I have literally been with people and they've been like, oh, well, let's go somewhere else and talk where we ain't on campus or whatever. And we would literally go to the park. The park is like kind of like across the street from ASU. It's like right there. Like if I really wanted to walk from ASU to the park, I could do that. I wouldn't nowadays because of the fact that that park is not what it used to be. It used to be a I used to live for that park. I used to go walk in that park. <sighs> anyway, we ain't going to go into that either. That actually is a park that is very historical and I ain't got time. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, that ain't what this video is about. But so I had no reason to doubt that we were going to actually like go somewhere where there was more privacy or less people were around us. So like maybe a little place in the mall or maybe uh, another park, if not the actual park that was across the street or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking, y'all. So I hop in the truck. I, I finally get up in there because, of course, everybody and their mama got to have these trucks. This I'm short. So... <laughs> So I'm short, right? So I'm like, um, and he is trying to help me get up in the truck. And I'm like, yeah, you're doing the most already. I was like, I got it. I, I, I got it. Like for real. I remember that like it was yesterday. So I got up in the truck and still no da stranger danger. I mean, he was just being a guy, a typical guy who liked what he liked or whatever. And like I said, I made it clear in the beginning that I wanted nothing to do with anything sexual. I'm just here for friendship. So, he's driving. And so, I'm like, oh, okay. And then we start going towards an area I'm not familiar with because I didn't start driving for real until I was 18 and 19 years old. So, that's when I got my license and I'm glad for that because... A lot of people I went to school with died or got into terrible accidents because they were driving to school and they weren't experienced. My mama made us learn and I have not been any in any terrible accidents and all that stuff. Been pretty much a safe driver. I just like to speed. But anyway, I digress. So I'm looking like, okay, I don't know where we're going, but okay. You know, still not, you know, not really stranger danger or anything like that in my mind. So then we end up turning into some neighborhood that I'm not familiar with. So I'm like, are we going to his house? Like, what is going on here? And eventually we pull up into a driveway. So I'm like, okay, I guess this is his house. Well, I was wrong about that being his house. It was one of his homeboys' houses, and I was like, okay. So, he ended up leading me to this room and made it seem like we were just going to talk and watch TV and watch movies. And I said, oh, okay. All, all right. And that's not what ended up happening. Y'all... It's like, he put me in the room, right? And he was like, I'll be back. Because he had to go holler at his friend or whatever, his homeboy. And so that's when my stomach got in knots and all the other stuff. Like my gut was really telling me like, okay, this is not, something ain't right. Like that's when something finally alerted me to something not being right. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what's about to go down or what he is thinking. But I don't think this is going to be a good situation. Y'all, he finally comes back. And then he's looking at me like, you know what time it is. And I'm looking at him like, 
I don't know what you're talking about, but I already told you what my intentions are. And he was not trying to hit it. So I'm just looking at him like, and he looking at me like, but you finna drop these draws though. Y'all, I was far off somewhere and I had no idea where I was, how to get back. And I was fearful that he was going to do something to me, like in my life, fearful. And I was then forced to, you know, engage in sexual acts with him. And I didn't want to. Tell me why. It's already bad enough that that was happening. While it was happening, his friend opens the door and is like, I want to get some. Can I get some? And I'm looking mortified. Like, the dude ended up stopping right. I pulled a cover up over me because I'm naked. Like, what are you doing in here? You know this room is preoccupied, so to speak, or whatever. And he rolled up in the room, like, when my turn. And dude ended up telling him, nah, ain't that type of party. And basically made it plain like he wasn't, you know, sharing me. And I was just like... I was like, God, please get me out of this situation. This is crazy. And so it ended up being over and he was like, all right, so I got to take you back to, to the school. I was like, put clothes on, did the walk of shame through that man's house and got back into the truck and didn't say nothing to him on the way back. And he didn't say nothing to me. And this is because he knew he was wrong. Now, it's already bad enough that I just ended up having to have sex with somebody that I had no attraction to at all, that I did not want to have sex with anyway. Y'all, he's married. So... I ended up finding out after the fact that he was married and I was already like, I'm not talking to him no more. Like there's no conversation. He better not. I am me, you know, instant message me on college club. He better not say that to me on Yahoo because he had both. Like, I was like, he better not call me. He better not text me. No communication better happen at all in my direction. There's nothing for him to say to me because you could tell by the way he was acting that he knew he was wrong. He knew that I didn't want that to happen. I'd already told him that I only wanted regular friendships with people and that was it. Y'all, so... Get back to ASU and he told me he wanted a hug. I was like, nah, that's all right. And I proceeded to fast walk away from his truck. I was just so grateful when I saw ASU's campus that I didn't know what to do. Y'all, I went into one of the bathrooms on campus and washed myself and all that. I mean, granted, a condom was used, but I just felt beyond disgusted. Y'all, and like I said, I found out after the fact that he was married. And I don't even know why it even popped. I don't, some kind of way it just popped up. And it was pictures of him. And he, he said he, something on something said that he was married. And it had pictures of um him and his wife. And I was like, and so he started calling me. And I ignored him at first. And so then he called, kept calling. And I I was like, you know what? I want to know. I really would like to know why he thought it was okay to do the things that were done. And on top of that, not even tell me that he's married. Because 
you know, of course, obviously I would have been like, nah. Okay, so I'm talking to him on the phone. So he trying to talk to me like we having a normal conversation. Hey, how you doing? You doing all right? I mean, trying to really have a full on normal conversation with me. And I'm like, yeah, what we going to do is cut all that out. Um, why didn't you tell me that you were married? And so he was like, oh, who? And I mean, didn't say nothing really. And I was like, okay, so I'm really over here trying to be dumb and rationalize. And be like, well, maybe they are getting divorced. Maybe they're in the middle of a divorce. Maybe that's what it is. So I'm saying these things out loud to him. He was like, no, I'm happy with my wife. I ain't got no problem with my wife. They had been married 14, 15 years at, at that point. I don't know what if they still married or not. But he was talking about he ain't had no problem with her. There ain't no issues in their marriage. I'm saying, and I told him, I'm like, there must be something. Cause what did you just do with me though? You online trying to talk to people and you sitting up and meeting with people. And I don't, I'm probably not the first or will be the only person that you've done this with or two. So it's like, like, are you crazy? Like, I really was looking at him like, you cannot even be serious. And he really was dead serious y'all. And proceeded to ask me when was the next time that he was going to see me. And I was like, never. This is going to be the last conversation. Like, this will be the last time you get to say any words to me. If you see me in the street, you don't know me. Like, all of that. Like, straight like that. There's nothing for you to say to me. So, I was just looking at him, looking at my phone like, nah. Like, he really sat up there, and I mean, he kind of, you know, said a few more things. And he was like, well, you know, I guess if you meant what you said, I guess it's the last time we're going to talk. And I hung up in his face. So, y'all, I could not even believe that situation. Like my, And then that's the dumb part. You would think that I just went into the situation blind. Whenever I'm talking to people, even if it's on a level of we supposed to be friends, one of the first things I ask you is, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a fiance? Are you married? And as I've said before, which I shouldn't have to ask, but you do in this day and age, were you a woman before now? You know, were you born as a male? Were you born as a female? You know, I, I've literally had to ask these questions. I've asked those questions before. And he, like other people, have told me, oh, I ain't in a relationship. I haven't been with anybody in two, two and a half years. I haven't been in a relationship. I haven't dated. I haven't done anything in two, two and a half years. I don't understand. Is there a playbook or something going around? Because that literally was what the line was that dudes would tell me. That they ain't been with nobody in two years or two and a half years. And they would have a whole girlfriend or a whole wife somewhere. And I'm just like, I don't understand. So... But yeah, he um, got the hint. He actually tried to message me on College Club a little while after our conversation ended. And I politely declined the message and I blocked him. I think is what you could do. I blocked him on there on College Club. So he wasn't able to talk to me. And I made sure to put his name in the block part on you um on um Yahoo as well. But yeah, y'all. I was not here for that. I do not condone that. I did not knowingly deal with that guy. Cause I wouldn't have said anything outside of, hey, how you doing? When were you last at ASU or something like along those lines had I known he was married? Because I do not believe in disrespecting what is supposed to be something that is along the lines of sacred which is marriage so I don't play that I'm not trying to talk to you I'm not trying to have no kind of intimate or whatever you you think the situation gonna be type of conversation with you definitely trying trying to not have any type of physical contact with you you barely getting a church a hug you barely getting that and I am a very a very hands-on we we gonna hug I, I, that's just how I am. I hug people, but yeah, if it had been, if I had known that, oh, he would have never got a hug. He definitely wouldn't have been able to get me in his truck and then lie to me as if we're going to go somewhere and talk when talking didn't happen. And I was forced into a sexual situation that I was not 
here for at all and did not want to be a part of. <sighs> but yeah, y'all. That's the end of this story time. I actually have another story about a married guy. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that now and post it after this. So y'all stay tuned. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.